Hey everybody, John here. Welcome to my series, How to Use Citrus. This is part five where we will dive into the filter section. And Citrus comes with 13 different filter modes and there's a lot of different options to change how those filters work. And you have a custom articulation section and then a built-in wave shaper as well, which is really cool for adding distortion to your patch. So let's load up Citrus here. And instead of going to the default, what we have been doing throughout this series, let's go to default subtractive. And if you're wondering what this big square thing is here on top of Citrus, this is a spectrum analyzer, and it's a little bit easier to visualize what we're actually doing, especially with the filter. So with this patch here, this default subtractive, it's going to create a saw wave in your first operator, you're going to route that into your filter and then to your output. So it kind of does a few steps for you, which is kind of nice. It'll load up this low pass two filter, which is just the vanilla low pass. But for now, let's change this to chocolate state variable, the SVF filter. Let's turn this cutoff envelope off and this volume envelope off for now and take this resonance down. So first things first, the different filters you can pick are all listed right here. Feel free to read them if you'd like to. Uh, this SVF is pretty cool because you have a low, a band, and a high pass filter already built in. So if we turn this all the way up in our band and high all the way down, it's essentially a low pass filter. And we can see that just by adjusting the cutoff here as it tapers off that high end there. So up here is our full spectrum, and the more that we drag this down, the more it's going to shave off the top of those harmonics there. And then next up, we have this flat button here, and this is basically going to be a different algorithm for this resonance knob. So it seemed like that first one, you can see the little changes I did right here, and it's a little bit less on this one. So just a different algorithm, different sound for the resonance there. So depending on what you kind of like uh, your patch to sound like, feel free to play with that button right there. This HQ setting right here, uh, according to the manual for Citrus, this is necessary to have on if you're doing sample rate of 44.1 or less. And when you're using this, uh, this high pass, uh, this high pass of the SVF filter here. So if, if it's on like this, they recommend to have this HQ on. So yeah, just passing that one along. Next up, you have off times one, two, three, alt two, and alt three. So off is going to turn the filter off entirely. So there's going to be no effect. And then one is going to be a 12 dB cutoff. Two is going to be 24. Three is going to be 36. And alt two and three are also 24 dB cutoff and 36 dB cutoff, but they're alternate versions of this two and this three. So this will this won't change for for the other uh, filters except for the uh, the phaser here, <clears throat> and so with the phaser, basically think of it like there's orders of one through ten. So one this is obviously going to be one, two, three, and then four and five, and then we would select flat, and then this will go six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So let's have it ridiculous on ten. So enable this flat, and then have alt times three. And then we're going to see this result. So pretty crazy. And if that's too much, which it seems like it is, unless you're going for something like that, let's turn the flat off and let's go to one. So the lowest setting. So it does have the same effect. It's just not nearly as strong. And then you can kind of go up a couple of these if you want it really strong or then hit flat and then go times three for the full effect. So something to think of there, this resonance knob will turn into a feedback knob for this phaser. So it gets pretty crazy with that. If it's all the way down, it won't be as impactful all the way up. That's then what it becomes there. So, and then we have this envelope knob and this is basically gonna be the cutoff envelope or LFO amount. So if we have our grab our cutoff down here and go to this envelope. Let's turn this on. Let's turn this, change this filter here. So this is that full influence of this envelope. And then now it's not. So the higher we increase this, the stronger that's going to influence. 
And we can see that here too, how this yellow is getting a little bit brighter than it is down over here. And then moving on, let's put this down a little bit here. Let's bring our resonance down. Let's go to just a regular 24. And then we have, so we have our low pass here. And if you want to do a band pass, you turn this low down, turn the band all the way up. And now this cut is basically going to find where you'd like to, uh, where you like to set off that band pass at. And the resonance is basically the width of, of that uh, band pass. And as you can tell how these peaks here look a little bit different here as we change this resonance knob there. So let's say you want a high pass, then you go over here. And you have that control as well. So let's go over to a low pass here, just a regular low pass there. Turn that resonance down a little bit. And then let's jump into, let's set my keyboard here, a little higher octave. So let's jump now into the wave shaper here. So to turn this on, you're just gonna select the on button. And we can already tell there's a little bit of that distortion. That's off and that's on. So we can tell it added all this stuff up here as well. And this amp is basically the preamp that's gonna drive it a little bit more, so all the way up it's gonna have a stronger effect. And this mix knob is basically gonna mix the distortion with your non-distorted sound. So all the way down is the same as if you have it off. And then we can introduce this mix knob a little bit more to taste of how much of that distortion that we would like. And I found this is actually really nice if we crank this up a little bit here. Let's go to our main. Let's add a couple unison voices here. Let's detune them a little bit. Go to our effects, turn the chorus down. Let's put some delays on here. And then turn our reverb on, turn it kind of up. So you get kind of a cool super saw kind of feel to it. And then you can add more operators to that if you want. Like let's add another saw here and let's put it up another octave and then also send that to filter two. So just with a little bit of that, distor that distortion, it can be kind of cool to add that extra effect there. So when we turn this on, Let's disable this uh, second oscillator for now. So when we turn this on, we get this, and go to this tab, we get this little graph here. And, a, and according to how we program this, it'll basically determine the different sound of distortion that we get. So kind of play around with this graph here to to kind of hone in and dial in the sound of your distortion that you'd like. You also have this mode here that switches it from unipolar to bipolar. So it's essentially taking this shape, adding it to one side and then inverting it and adding it to the other side. And now you can edit these ones individually. So this has a lot of cool, uh, I guess features in a way I would say, just it's a, it's a really cool, module here because it can really bring out a really nice distortion sound I think. And then our last button over here is going to be next. So let's say we have this first operator going to this filter and we like what's going on but we want to filter it again because we have all this set up and we might want to shave off a little bit of the top end or who knows what we want to filter. So we turn this next knob all the way up and it's going to send the signal that's in this filter directly to the second filter. So now let's turn this filter on, let's turn this off, and then send the output of filter two out. So now we're filtering the output of the first filter within our second filter. And if that's not enough for you, you can do it yet again, send the second one to the third filter, and then turn this on, 
and kaboom. We can filter it three times, which is really, really cool because you have a lot of different types of filters to play around with, and you have three independent filters that you can add stuff to. And they all have the wave shaper, which is really cool. So the third one doesn't have the next knob because there's only three. You can't send it into a fourth filter that doesn't exist. So that was probably self-explanatory, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. So hopefully this demystifies or kind of makes a little bit more sense in this filter section. And yeah, try to play around with it, have fun with it. It's a really cool filter, I think. Uh, sometimes I think different ones here, like this vanilla low pass, in my opinion, sounds a little bit better than the uh, than the lime low pass, but that all depends. It's all kind of kind of a subjective thing. So yeah, uh, I think I'll end this video here. And uh, thank you very much for watching. The next section we're going to go over is the effects section. So all our delays, our chorus, and our reverb, and what this little doohickey thing here does. So yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video. If you like this video, make sure to hit like, and then also subscribe for future videos. So I hope to see you in the next one.